you open your mouth and ask why, you had already made a mistake. Why not you? Why not? God had chosen some folks sitting right here in the pew to do a certain will, a certain thing. And everything is not about preaching from a pulpit. Let me get you straight. I trade places with any of you out there right now if the Lord said so. Because preaching is not easy. Especially when you don't want to hear it nobody. Help me somebody. That's discouraging all by itself. They don't want it. Paul, Paul will tell you, even in this past, he's reminding the folk, my goodness, you're chosen right there. And because you're chosen, I've got something not only that I want you to do, but you've got to listen to what God is saying on a daily basis. All right, slow down, preacher, or you're going to hurt finish up. I'll hurt to finish up. How about that? Just slow down. We wait for this, and we wait for that. But the time doesn't change, regardless of whatever burden that you're going through. And everybody don't have the same burdens. All of us don't have the same problem. Many of us don't have the same difficulties. Come on. Our minds sometimes are filled with confusion and frustration. Just out of waiting on the Lord. But if everything applied to our lives as we would have it, or if how we want it, then we wouldn't know how to trust in the Lord. In other words, we would have no need of God or Jesus because we would be wanting to do too many things on our own. Can I get a little bit? The body suffers with pain and discomfort. But out of all the pain and suffering that we go through, God still will supply your every need. God will still move your mountain. God will still allow you to stand up and eat last and evil days and say, for God I will live. And for God I will die. And for, if it's not God's way, then it's no other way. Are you there? There are some things that, that you don't have to wait. And I just want to close out by telling you this. You don't have to wait on forgiveness. Because God forgave you from the cross. I know we hear that passage often in the seven last words. But when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, you and I had not even been born yet. For they know not what they do. Can I get a witness? There are some things that you don't have to wait on. God knows how to bring peace in the midst of a storm. You're not waiting for the storm to calm. You just rely on that chosen issue that he said, I will supply your needs. Not just some of them, but all of them. Not just one of them, but many of them. Not just many, but anything that you ask in his name. The Bible says if you just have the faith, the sign of the mercy, the Bible real 
quick and say, neighbor. neighbor, I don't have no doubt. My blessing, my blessing, my blessing, my blessing. My blessing. Oh, my blessing. My blessing. is on the way. Oh, on the way. All right. yeah. There are blessings that you haven't received yet. What is important is the fellowship that you have with Jesus. Fellowship you have with the Word of God. And I tell you, when you fall out of fellowship, your blessings are still coming. But don't as many come. Because God keeps you when you can't keep yourself. Huh? Help me somebody. You and I fall in and out of this grace. An amazing part about it, but because He gave it all there on the cross, He knew that we would fall short. Yes. But don't you keep on falling short and assuming anything. Yes. And the reason I say this is because you assume that you'll be here on tomorrow. Yes. Come on. But it's because of His amazing grace yes. that you get up yes. the next morning. Yes. You assume that your life is all in His hands. Yes. But Satan has a trick that you haven't seen yet. Yes. And you've got to be able to stand even if you have to stand the Lord. Come on, somebody. you got to be able to hold out. And in your waiting, don't get impatient. But just remember the thing. Because you're chosen, that that blessing, it may not be the one you're praying for, but a blessing, a chosen blessing, is always in your corner. That's a good thing to know, that God is always by my side. I know what the writer meant when he said he's always, 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 always been by my side. Well, let me tell you what. I don't believe that nobody had to wait in order to obtain assistance in the midst of a storm. And although we live in a world, the right now attitude, if we could receive Jesus as fast as we want these blessings, we'd be dangerous. We want the right now blessing, but we don't have the right now faith. We want the right now forgiveness, but we don't have the profound reason or season to forgive. But we expect God to forgive us but we will not forgive others. You don't want to hear this. Go ahead, but yet we want to proclaim, in spite of all of this, he has still chosen you as his sons and daughters. But I want to remind you, for those that have repented of their sins, those that have received Jesus as their personal Savior, have an edge. Because we don't have to wait to get to heaven because you know you've been born again, that is your destination. Yes. And it's good to know that I know that I'm going to heaven yes. because Jesus said it because I gave my life yes. to him. Yes. But if there is, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. But if there is some doubt yes. about whether I'm going to heaven, then it all lies right in here and within your soul. That, that the question mark is, it's not the question, are you saved or have you been saved, but do you realize that you have been chosen by God? And the realization of knowing that I've been chosen brings the belief, brings the understanding, brings the repentance, brings the confession, and brings that soul into the fold of Christ where they're safe and sound. Then you can say without a doubt that in spite of how your neighbor may treat you, in spite of what others may talk about, in spite of the letdown, in spite of any and everything, the, all the crisis that you may have had to go through, that your blessing is on the way. Listen, you ever been in a crowd? Well, let me turn this around. Let's don't go with a crowd. Let's go with the mega million. And uh, let's, well, let's just face reality. That's right. Amen. The Mega, Powerball, and four or five other categories that they, they'd come on the TV and 
or everywhere else. And it's all over the newspaper. And every day, every week, many of us are in the pews. We're trying to figure out what that number is. And we're waiting and waiting for the selection. The bad part about it is while we're waiting, we don't want nobody else to win. Are you there? Come on, you know I'm right, but let's be real. You don't want nobody to win. You think about all the things you would do, all the things, the first thing, a lot of people used to tell me, Pastor, I'll give you the first dollar. Or we'll give the church this, or we'll give the church. Well, I bet the church is not going to do this. Well, if it's so bad, I bet if we laid a million dollars up on the offer, would the church take it? Yes. And of course, the church would say yes. <laughs> what does it do? That doesn't determine whether the money is dirty or clean. That doesn't determine whether it's clean. The filth of the whole matter is that you trusted man before you trusted God. You may not like that, but that is the truth. God knows how. He knows exactly what. Matter of fact, most of us get uppity when we get a little money in our pocket. Many times that's why God keeps a lot of us broke. Come on, Come on you want to say amen to that. We stay broke because we can't get rich in prosperity. Spiritual prosperity. And that's what we need the most. When God says you're chosen, there is nothing that God has already supplied for you during this duration here on earth that, he, that you don't need. The question is, when are you going to take what already given to you? Yes, sir. When the Bible speaks of us being a chosen generation, yes, it doesn't mean that we have to go down there with our head down. It doesn't mean that you have to get everything you want either. But because you are a chosen generation, God will take care of us. Yes, but there's still some things you got. Hold up, preacher. If God measured your service and your faith and your commitment on what you have now, many of us would have nothing. Because we only depend on God in different circumstances. And God puts us, and some of you don't want to hear it. A lot of you have already closed your ears, but let me tell you what. I'm not saying the lotto is the worst thing in the world, but I'm saying when you're depending on man to supply your needs rather than God, you're probably paying a lot of more money than you'll get in a lifetime. That's right. Amen. Let's turn this thing around. Still, I know one day you're going to be out there again. I know what Pastor said. Maybe this one time this might be. But see, that goes further than what you think it is. But God said He will supply all of your needs. You name me one situation where the lotto paid off before God did. You're not going to be able to do it. The lotto is still going on and you still didn't win it. But God is still blessing. Do I have a witness? If you want to get rich, you might as well put your hands together. It's the truth. Come on. Put your hands together. Your winning ticket is John 3.16. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's your winning ticket. Because you need to realize how much he loved you. You'll give your whole life to him. Yes. And what the problem is now in us waiting, as I get ready to take my seat, we're waiting on Jesus to come back. But many of us are not ready when he comes. We're ready to throw in the towel and say, well, this. I've done all I can do, and, and, and well, if I go to heaven, good. If I don't, well, let me tell you, not only all it is your mind playing with fire, but God don't work that way. He never has, and He never will. You ought to have a determination to be thou faithful until death. And the Bible says, then He will give that crown of life. That's what it's hard for me to understand for any person to come up the aisle which have already been saved in their seats and not give their total life to God. Total life meaning we, we go through the, the, the ritual steps of coming and giving our life to Christ and we're, we're committed, we're afraid others are going to talk, people are going to say this. And, and the Bible makes it so clear that because we're chosen, 
The walking down the aisle doesn't make the difference. It's what you did in your heart before you decided to get up and walk. Yes. That's the most important thing. But if you don't have Jesus, be brave enough or courageous enough or humble enough. Say, look, I don't have Jesus. What, what do I need to do to get it? And once I get it, how can I keep it? All right. Let me tell you what. In the waiting process, because you're chosen, he does the keeping. All you have to do is be faithful. The other side of this is that because we don't know when he's coming, it's an unbalanced scale. Life becomes not only a chance, but our future becomes even more treacherous because we don't know where we're going. The only way you'll know where you're going is to know that you're chosen. This is what this passage really does for me. God didn't just choose me to preach his word. I know that he chose me for a reason. And that I have a place in the kingdom. <coughs> that confidence, that assurance, every believer should have. Amen. So the waiting process doesn't really matter to us. We just know, we know he's coming back. But you know what? You have to take a personal attitude about this. He's coming back for me. Now, if you don't want to go, that's your business. Yeah, right. If you don't want to do this or that, that's still your business. All I can do is pray for you. But if you desire to see the king one of these days, there's something that you've got to do. That is above all. He didn't just choose you because you look good or because you look right. Or you this tall or this short. He didn't just choose you just for the mere sake of choosing somebody. He chose you because he loved you. Amen. And that's a difference. Now if you don't love yourself, that is a problem. But to love God is a powerful thing. It will change your whole life. So instead of waiting on the Holy Ghost to touch you,